Good morning, everyone. Uh, I've had a number of questions relating to the layout and uh, procedure for doing the abstract for assignment three of Quantity Surveying 2. So I've decided to put uh, an example or a video together just explaining um, how the abstract process works. So what we have here on the screen is this left hand side of the of the screen is going to be the abstract paper and on the right hand side uh, in the shaded area that is the actual measure so I've just taken one little section just to give you the example so this is you can see the the measuring down uh, on the right hand side this is just the foundation section of a project that uh, that's previously me done it's not your assignment uh, it's actually a first year uh, drawing so just an example of how the abstract will work. Okay, so on the left hand side, we've got uh, a number of columns. Now the format that you can use, if you, um, I will post a, a copy of this abstract page um, on the uh, group and on WhatsApp, sorry, in WhatsApp and WhatsApp. Uh, so if you want to use this, you can, but you can also devise your own similar method uh, I'm not saying you have to follow this exact procedure, but this is the actual abstract paper that would uh, would normally be used. But as long as you've got the elements involved in the abstract process, I'll be happy uh, to to mark that. Okay, so what we're going to do is we've got the measure here on the right hand side. So you're going to need to measure or tr to transfer the items that you have measured. For example, in this example, there was clear sight. I'm going to skip that one and skip the uh, stripping of topsoil, but let's go on and do the excavation item. So with the excavation item, you can see we've got the excavation and we've got the, the volumes. I've already done the, the squaring of the dimensions and then we've also got our backfill. So these items need to be transferred, first of all, onto the abstract paper and the process will include taking the description and the total and putting them into relevant columns over here on the on the abstract sheet but we also need to do in this process of abstract we need to sort out on the abstract sheet the correct order in which these items that we have measured are going to appear in our bills of quantities now to give you a guideline as to the order and also the trades uh, part of the assignment that you did have was to identify the clause and also the trade where these items were measured because that's going to help you to put them into the correct order when you're abstracting them secondly i also asked you to do the squaring of the, the dimensions in your first and second assignment so those totals should already be done so in in these columns here on the abstract page what we're going to do is we're going to just have a look at the uh, headings that we're going to have we know we've got four trades that we're looking at we're looking at earthworks we're looking at concrete formwork reinforcement masonry and waterproofing so what i'm going to do on my first page is i'm going to put down a title and say this is going to be my title or my heading for all the earthworks items so i would put my my uh, heading and say this page is going to be all the um, earthworks items this page here is going to be all my concrete formwork and reinforcement items so I'm just going to copy and paste the heading here so this is going to be my concrete formwork and reinforcement page so any concrete and formwork items that I have measured in my two assignments I would then bring them on in, onto this page any earthworks tr uh, trades trade items that I've measured I'll bring them onto this page and then uh, I haven't got another page so I'm just going to move across here and say I'm going to put my um, masonry trade on the same page here because I haven't got a lot of uh, concrete formwork and reinforcement items so I'm going to put it uh, let's put it over here so there is my masonry trade and then I will also have my waterproofing trade so I'll place that over there okay now you can see each trade uh, or each section is going to cover two columns so the left hand and the right hand column these two columns here will be grouped together so i will put my description and then on the left hand column i'll put my add 
quantities and on the right hand column I'll put my deduct quantities this narrower column here is the page number where this item was measured so in this one here you're gonna you would in your assignment you would put what assignment number and page number um, in this column here so that's that narrower column you're going to put assignment one page 15 or wherever that, that item comes from I'll, in the example you'll see what I'm uh, where, where that information will come from so the first item I'm going to look at is my uh, excavation so I'm going to do my excavate in pickable material in other words this item over here on my measure I'm going to now take that item and I'm going to place it on my abstract so that's the process you will take the description um, and in the process you will then write it over here and put it in there and say excavate in pickable material not exceeding two meters deep for trenches I have also um, brought through the unit of measurement for that item so you can see the description will uh, go across those uh, two columns and then my item or the the total that I have got for my excavation uh, if I go to my excavation you can see I had a total of 27,51 so I'm going to take that total and I'm going to put it in this column over here and say there is my total and that came from if I have a look here there's my excavation and that came from page four so I'm going to also include when I'm writing my total down that that is in page page four so let me okay so I've got my total which has come from this item here excavate the impeccable material and I've taken my total of my dims and I've also taken my page number now in this example there is no deduct so if there was a deduct we would put any deduct totals over there and then write those and add up all the deducts add up all the adds and then you'll see in my um, re my risk of collapse item where we will have an adjustment okay so that's the first item now you'll also notice when I've done my, my abstract I haven't used an abbreviation I've actually written it out because remember this is almost getting the bill ready all the descriptions ready so that it can be billed so in my, de in my abstract I'm going to write my descriptions out in full no abbreviations you can use M for meters or MM for millimeters that's fine but in your abstract you should not uh, use any abbreviations okay so the next item I'm going to measure is going to be my risk of collapse so I'm just going to put a little heading up there for my uh, I should have actually put a little heading here for for trenches but this is going to be my risk of collapse so for the risk of collapse I'm going to take my description which is this item over here there's my risk of collapse and I'm going to paste it or put it over here and there's going to be my full description risk of collapse to sides of holes and trench excavations not exceeding 1,5 meters deep okay and I brought the unit of measurement through so in this case there is my item that I just measured and I'm going to transfer that total there that 83,48 so the 83,48 together with the page number I'm going to bring through and put over here so there is my 83,48 and my page number now if we have a look at the risk of collapse there is the risk of collapse and I also had to deduct for risk of collapse so I must also deduct 4,88 which is the deduction where there are intersections of the trenches so in my item in my item I'm going to have a deduct here of 4,88 also from page 4 so now I've got an add and I've got a deduct now some of the questions that I've been having is do we do the deduct on the abstract the answer is yes 
because we've got to now work out what the final total is for my risk of collapse. In other words, that is my add total, that is my deduct total. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this total here, that 83,48, and put it there. And then I'm getting and then I'm going to work out what my final total is, which is 78,60. Okay, so that is how you do your abstract or how you do the adjustment of your totals. Now I'm just I'm not going to do all the items. Uh, I'm just doing one or two just as an example. So this is the total that is going to be taken with this description and when your items are billed in the bills of quantity you'll take the description and this total over here and that will be put into your bills of quantities. Uh, I've also included as I said the unit of measurement which will help you to, to put in the unit when you're billing this item as well.